everyone, and we have a full house. It's really nice to be here on this sacred ground. I haven't given thought of the day for a really long time. It's such an honor to do it, um, surrounded by so many amazing women at Homeway, and especially during Women's History Month, which is we're doing an ode, and it's mostly women speaking this month. So I want to dedicate this to the women in my family. My sister Celine, Christine, and Elaine, who are my very best friends. The blessings that are my bonus sisters, my sisters-in-law, Yvonne and Amy. My nieces, Marissa, Spencer, Jillian, Madison, Lily, and Vivian. To my friends who became family and married my nephew, Kathy. And to my other nieces-in-law, Ashley and Candace. To my Aunt Eileen, her daughters, Kristen and Elise, my beloved cousins. And to their daughters, Reese, Olivia, and Eden. So my family roll call is almost done, it's long. I have three <laughs> brothers and three sisters, many, many cousins. My grandfather was one of 13. Big, big family, mostly here in Los Angeles. So these women have been around me my entire life. I've had ride or dies with me on this journey since literally I was born. The very last woman on my roll call was born Therese Marie Duarte. To many, they call her Teddy to her beloved grandkids and great-grandkids, she's TT, and to me, she's mom. She raised seven kids. She's been married to my dad for 68 years. She embraced each one of us, our crazy, kooky, wonderful selves. She's still in our lives. She turns 90 last summer. I'm gonna share one story about her. It happened recently, and I hope I can get through it. Exactly four weeks ago, my brother Paul, I'm sandwiched in between two, Paul and Christian. He's six years older than me. His heart stopped, it was Valentine's Day. He never recovered. It was a long time coming. He had been sick for a while, but it was sudden and has been utterly devastating. So late in the evening on Valentine's Day, we got a call that our sweet Paul was on life support. We spent time with him over the coming days and the amazing doctors at his hospital who had taken care of him on and off over this last year determined that our next course of action would be to take him off life support. My mom during this time was stronger than I've ever seen her. She was more gracious with us and kept asking us if we were okay, her children. All the while I knew her heart was breaking in ways that she never imagined or that I ever imagined for her. Thursday of that week, so three days later, after he'd had his heart attack, it was our time to say our final goodbye. And with COVID, it's been really difficult to even visit him. And so we knew that six of us were gonna be allowed to go in, but only in pairs of two. So we had three groups going up to visit him, two at a time. I was paired with my mom. As I received the enormity of this assignment in my family, I tried to breathe my way through it and I thought of Teresa and Fahima and all that they've taught me about being present. And at that moment, as I stepped outside of the hospital doors just to catch my breath, Father Greg sent me a text. He said, savor this, savor this time. I stepped into the elevator and breathed through his text and I told my mom what he had sent. We got into the elevator and the doors went to close and I looked at my mom and said, I want to run out the door. And she said, I kind of do too. I wondered how I was gonna get through it watching my mom say goodbye to her son. As we entered Paul's room, I just thought to myself, what am I gonna do? And it dawned on me, I'm gonna follow my mom's lead because it's always been a sure bet my whole entire life. My mom is remarkable, she walked up to Paul she leaned into her ear, his ear, sorry, and she said, sweet Paul, it's your mom, and I love you. And she said it in a voice that's really similar to mine. I think we speak alike and have the same tone, but it's also this message that I've heard thousands of times from her. Allison, it's your mom, call me back. Always calm, and then she would always tell me, and she still does, I need to find out the recipe you are using, but it's always Allison, it's your mom. And sometimes she'll say, I love you. Anyway, this was my lead in the hospital room. We spent about a half an hour with Paul. My mom said a few prayers and she played some hymns um, from Catholic masses that I recognized. 
I decided I was going to play him two Led Zeppelin songs from his favorite band. She was not very happy with me. <laughs> I played Stairway to Heaven, which is an exceptionally long song. <laughs> but she let me do it and she indulged me and we each had our moments with Paul. At one point, I tucked my head into the shoulder on his bed and cried and cried. As I recovered, I looked up at my mom with her glistening eyes, her smooth, soothing smile, that smile of knowingness, and it just let me know that she was okay and that I was gonna be okay. As we decided to leave, we both sighed deep, deep sighs. I think we both felt as though our feet were so heavy or cemented in the ground, neither one of us wanted to leave the room. As we walked the hallway back to the elevator, I looked at my mom and I said, are you okay? My mom took some time and she said, as okay as I can be. And I'm okay and you're gonna be okay and Paul will be at peace. I immediately thought to myself, how can my mom be this way right now in this moment? But my mom's focal points of her life are family, faith, her fortitude and love. And this is what she centered herself in and gave to me in those moments. She's strong and loving and gracious and patient. This last month hasn't been easy in any way for my family, and let my mom, my mom continues on her pathway of strength and resilience. I think for me, what I've learned from my mom in these lessons of how to grieve are really about what she surrounded herself in love. To be in the present moment and be with the person who's right in front of you. To be strong, but to also let yourself be vulnerable and to lean on family and friends. So I think for me, the invitation today to all of us in our beloved community is show each other love, be present, allow vulnerability, and lean on your family and friends. As I was writing this last night and thinking about it, exhausted from the Maximo, I was sort of watching a movie in the background called The Adam Project. The movie's credits close, and the song they play is by Pete Townsend. It's called Let My Love Open the Door. This was one of my brother's favorite songs. If he wasn't tapping on my shoulder right then to give me the strength to be here today, I'm really not sure what message I was supposed to get. I know every word to the song because he played it over and over and over again, and it's now one of my favorites, and I've played it a few times since he died a month ago. So there he was for me at the end of the movie, tapping my shoulder and giving me a hug, and I'm really appreciative. Before I close out, I wanna give a shout out to the four women who spoke at La Maximo. Maricela, our homegirl hero, Jane Fonda, Vanessa Abrego, and Stephanie Lane. Wow, they were completely, completely inspiring. Completely. Their words meant so much to me, and I won't ever forget them, I'll hold on to them. And certainly in this time of grief, they showed strength um, for me that I can sort of model. And I just wanna thank all of them with my own intense grief that I'm going through. I'm missing my sweet brother. They just gave me strength and courage. Thank you all.